right. you took on a second job, yeah. did what it took to make the payments. And by the way, that car I purchased, I say I, we purchased it, but I usually made the financial decision, so I'll take responsibility. 21 and three quarter percent, 1982. <laughs> yeah, how'd you like to buy a car today at 21 and three quarter percent? No, thank you. No? Would anybody do it? No, I mean, you're all wiser than we were. Because right? we times. chose to do it. But it's interesting because many people, and then maybe some of you in this room, maybe it's none of you in this room, but many people keep a balance on a Visa or a MasterCard. Yeah. That's 18%. You're pretty close to the 21 and three quarter. Some people have balances on their Bay card, their Sears card, their Canadian Tire card. That's usually 26, 28%. That's worse than my car loan, right? But we don't really notice it because they call it revolving credit, right? You make your payment, you have good intentions. Anybody ever had good intentions on a visa? You go, oh, I'll have the money, I'll pay it. <laughs> and then some life happens and you don't have the money. And so you go, okay, the minimum payment is $10, but $10 will take 35 years to pay off this credit card if I pay $10. So I'm gonna slap an extra 50 on it or I'll slap an extra 100 on it or whatever. And we, and we have good intentions of paying it off. But then life happens and the car breaks and whatever and we've got to put more on our Visa card again. And it's a vicious cycle. That's why they call it revolving credit. And the banks love it. Right? Has anybody ever been caught in that trap? No? You guys are brilliant. You have good financial. That's great. Then. We did it so, again and again. So I got up to here where the pain was too, too much. Life wasn't fun. We're working too much. So what do we do? We didn't know where to go for financial advice, so we went to... Where do you think we went? The bank. We went to the, the bank! Because the bank has all the money, they must know what to do. So we went to see the bank, and the bank said, oh, Mr. and Mrs. Decker, you have good credit. You've been paying all your payments on time all the time. Oh, yeah. And, and <laughs> as a matter of fact, the interest... You can relate, Jessica? <laughs> the like, yeah, like, so the interest <laughs> rates have gone down. So, Mr. Decker, we can take your, your Visa, your MasterCard, your car payment, and all that, and we'll put it in a nice loan, amortize it out a bit, give you a nice easy monthly payment, and it's gonna be at, I think it was 16%. I'm going, oh, that's cool, that's way better than 21 and three quarter. And better than 28. Yeah. And my, my pain went like that, instantly, right? But what they didn't do is they didn't give me plastic surgery. Do you know what I mean? I was young enough, I didn't need plastic surgery. But what they, what, what I meant was, they should have cut up my credit cards, right? That's the plastic surgery we should have done. But we didn't. And we've had clients actually take their credit cards when they're done with them because they're not going to do it anymore. And their form of plastic surgery is to take them all, cut them a little bit, put them on a cookie sheet, put them in the oven and melt them. <laughs> and turn them into this beautiful yeah. collage and hang it on the yeah. wall. I hung one on my window. Yeah. Yeah. So that never again will they accumulate the credit card debt because there's this thing staring at them that is, yeah. So the pain went away, but the habits didn't. Right. So here we go. We got up to here, we're making more money now, but the pain threshold came again. Now, I'm like an addict, okay? It worked last time, relieve my pain, I'm going back. So I go to the bank, guess what? Interest rates are down even lower. I re or re whatever, consolidate, pain goes down, it's at 14% now, but it's a bigger amount of money because I've accumulated more debt. Well, I'm a thorough learner too, it took me three times to learn, I did that again, <laughs> hit the pain, and then when we went down here, we said, okay, that's it. And as a matter of fact, there were periods in here where we said, you know what, this is crazy, and we would stop spending, and we'd start paying down, and we'd get some debt down. And, the, and we'd go this way for a little while, the pain would subside, but then the habits would come back. And so pain is a poor motivator. Approximately 10, sorry, about 90% of people are motivated by avoiding pain, okay? I'll do X to avoid Y. If I avoid this pain, I'll do this, okay? called a pain switch or pleasure switch. I'll get pleasure and avoid pain, right? Most people will take that trade 
every day. The problem is when you do that, you get this. And they actually did a study, they put those little electrodes on the brain, you know, and they, they measure where pleasure and pain comes from. And when people paid with credit card or debit card, the brain registered pleasure. When they took cash out and paid with cash, the brain registered pain. So what, they, what the financial industries have done is created a system where you don't have to track cash anymore. I don't know if anybody's ever gone into a grocery store with no credit card, no payment plan, just cash. And if you had 50 bucks in your pocket because you were gonna spend $50 on groceries, guess how much went in your buggy? 50 bucks. Or less, <laughs> right? Because it's embarrassing to go to the counter and go, oh, can we take this off? Because I don't have enough money for that, right? That's embarrassing. But when you shop with a credit card, you put in, you shop, I shop with my stomach. I should never go shopping when I'm hungry for groceries, right? Because it's amazing what's in that buggy. And then when I get to the counter, I might go, wow, that was 150 bucks. I didn't think I was gonna spend that much. But I'm not gonna tell them take some off the counter because I got my credit card, right? And there's no pain in that. So learning the financial principles, which we're teaching tonight, and you can learn from the collective room, will actually change your financial blueprint and change how you respond to pain and pleasure. So, this is what motivated me before. Now what changed, it's a small change, but it's hugely significant, is 10% of the population is motivated by purpose. 